how do you recover from narcissistic abuse? Well, before we start talking about that, we have to talk about a really important thing that a lot of people don't think about, and that is validation. One of the worst things about narcissistic abuse is that you never get the validation that you desperately need to get through it. It's one of the worst things about going through not just the abuse, but the recovery part. Because one of the ways that we heal as humans is through validation. This is validation that we so desperately want and need and never get in these situations. When a healthy person hurts someone in a relationship, they know that they've done something wrong. And even if they don't exactly agree with the person's perspective, they often give the person the simple gift of validating their perspective. And that's something that narcissists will never do. So how are you supposed to get over narcissistic abuse when you don't even really fully understand what happened and you'll never get validation from that abuse? Well, that's what we're going to talk about today, queenbeing.com. Exactly what it is that we need to do to recover from narcissistic abuse without validation. Let's get back to the office and let's get started. My name is Angie Atkinson and on this channel I offer free daily video coaching to help you discover, understand, and overcome narcissistic abuse in toxic relationships. I like to call it toxic relationship rehab. So if that sounds good to you, hit that subscribe button and we'll get going. Like I said, narcissists, they don't take responsibility for their behavior ever. So you're not going to get an I'm sorry from a narcissist that's sincere. You're not going to get any validation for the pain that they caused you or anything else that they've put you through. The fact is, by nature, narcissistic personality disorder makes it almost impossible for a narcissist to actually accept any responsibility or to validate any of your pain and stress in the situation. They don't want to admit they've had anything to do with the problem and they certainly don't want to validate anything that you say that may kind of negate their personal story about the whole deal, right? So as someone who's gone through narcissistic abuse, chances are that anytime you've attempted to gain validation from your abuser, whether you did that through discussion or just simply saying, this is how I felt, can you please, you know, be sorry or something, or, you know, even, even to get general validation, you're probably met with things like rejection, dismissal, judgment, and quite honestly, very serious narcissistic rage anytime you ask for the validation that you so desperately need in order to heal. Like we just recently talked about, narcissists very often have a way of telling us to stop living in the past anytime we ask for any sort of validation at all for something they've done to hurt our feelings. And if we've been discarded, we might as well forget it. So how are we supposed to get through this? The fact of the matter is it's almost impossible for literally anyone, abused or otherwise, to get through any emotional upset when their feelings are being consistently discounted and ignored. When you've gone through narcissistic abuse, it's even worse because the fact of the matter is that this has been going on for you since you started that relationship. And if your narcissist or one of your narcissists is a parent or someone who's been in your life for more than a few months, chances are you don't even know what it feels like to be validated anyway. So how are you supposed to recover without any validation? How do you go from just being a survivor to being a real life thriver? How do you find yourself again? How do you find happiness again? Well, here's the thing. You're going to need a lot of inner strength and that feels hard sometimes because when we've gone through this, the inner strength that we need is often completely drained from us by the narcissist. But I will tell you this, when you do get through it, you're going to find yourself being so strong that like I tell you all the time, you'll be the strongest person you know in real life. You have to figure out a way to build or rebuild what you lost or what you never had. You have to find your self-confidence, find your self-esteem, find your ability to move forward, to self-love, to, to self-soothe, to bring yourself to the point where you know that you deserve better and you accept nothing less. Don't get me wrong, it's not fair. You shouldn't have to do that. Nobody should have to do that. It's not fair, it's abuse. Survivors, you gotta do all the work. You have to go to counseling or coaching, you have to do the inner work, figure out where the core wound is, all the things, right? It's not fair, why are you, why are you doing this when the narcissist is over there acting like everything's perfect in their life? And probably if we're being honest, love bombing someone else trying to get that much needed supply. We have to deal with unfair judgment from flying monkeys and other people, smear campaigns, things like this. And we also have to deal with taking action that feels contrary to our nature. The healing process isn't easy. And you know, just so that you understand why you won't get the validation, I want to review with you some 
basic qualities, four basic qualities that all narcissists share. Number one, always the lack of empathy. Number two, they're self-centered. Number three, they have a serious disregard for other people. And number four, they're selfish. They're not going to validate you. So how do we get you on the healing path? Well, here's the thing. A lot of my clients and a lot of my YouTube people tell me, listen, I don't even know who I am. I never have known or I've, I've forgotten or I'm not who I used to be and I don't know who I can be now because the fact is you're not going to be the same person you were before the abuse even if you were somebody that you wanted to be before the abuse. Why is that? Well, time has passed and you have changed. You have gained new experiences. Whether we want to admit it or not, the narcissist, they will change you forever. But if you choose to intentionally grow and move forward in a new way, it doesn't have to ruin you. The big secret here that I think a lot of survivors don't recognize is that deep down inside, we really are the person we want to be, even if it doesn't show on the outside just yet. See, the truth is that the best way to find yourself again after you go through narcissistic abuse in a toxic relationship is to remember or decide, figure out what it is that makes you happy. What are the activities and the things that you've always wanted to do? Jump into a project. Even if it's a project you do on your kitchen table, jump into something. Find something that makes you feel passionate and exciting. Indulge in the things you love the most. The things that, like I said, maybe you weren't allowed to indulge in when you were with a narcissist. The things that make your soul feel alive. As you're doing that, you're going to find yourself, your true self, starting to come to the surface. It's kind of a beautiful thing. Now here's something else that you should know. And I don't know if you've thought about this or if you're aware of it, but you being not good enough, as I'm sure the narcissist told you or implied to you that you were, is a big fat lie. It's something that the narcissist wanted you to believe so that they could retain control over you. It's part of a narcissist's nature to tear down the people who are closest to them. They need to feel in control and they need to obtain a certain amount of admiration, supply, etc. in order to feel normal. Now obviously when they're getting what they want, sometimes they can appear to be the best person you've ever met. But behind closed doors, you as someone who was one of the primary supplies or the primary supply already know that in fact, they're not so great. It's the narcissistic rage and the narcissistic injury that come when the narcissist feels like they're not getting enough attention or supply from you. Now, if you're the one leaving the narcissist, you might find that they start love bombing you again to suck you back in. Because, you know, once a narcissist gets on that track of oh, oh no, I'm going to lose my supply. Sometimes they suddenly become Mr. or Ms. Perfect again, and suddenly they're giving you all the good stuff that they gave you in the beginning, all the reasons you're there in the first place, the things that started you and hooked you and sucked you in. As we talked about recently, that's really just intermittent reinforcement, and it's an effort on their part to retain their existing source of supply and potentially to build a narcissistic harem. So how are you supposed to avoid falling for that trick? Well, my suggestion is to make a list of all the reasons that you left in the first place and to remember the strong emotional crap that comes with that list. When you feel weak, you have to remember why you left or why you want to leave and stay away. You know, the gnawing feeling you get in your stomach when they call you names or the horrible way they don't seem to actually see you as a real person. Instead, they see you as an object or an extension of themselves. Or maybe how your entire character, your whole being, your whole self was called into question every Every single time you accidentally broke one of the little rules or one of the little issues, the things that they have, the unwritten rules of the narcissist, as it were. Maybe it was the unspoken rules or the ridiculousness that made you want to leave or stay away. Or maybe you, you want to stay away because you've been discarded one time too many and you're just done. Or maybe you want to stay away because you're tired of double standards and double lives and bull crap. Whatever your reason is, write all that down and don't forget to include the emotional feelings so that when you do feel weak, you can look back at that list and figure that out. Now, I'm also going to include a a list of videos for you up here in the cards as well as below. I want you to remember that now you're the one who gets to decide what happens. You're the one who chooses your fate from here on out. You can choose to be miserable forever if you want to, but that sucks. I suggest that no matter what, you don't scare yourself into staying or going back to a narcissist. They're going to try to make you feel afraid and insecure. It's all part of their plan to keep you under control. The narcissist wants you to think that you can't live without them and they want you to think that if you leave, your life is going to fall apart. They want you to think that you can't do better. And I want you to know that none of that is true. Don't let the narcissist's false threats scare you. Don't let them fool you into thinking you can't live without them. The fact of the matter is it might feel a little scary to be in control of your life now and to be in full control and to be the one responsible for all the decisions but I promise you it's a beautiful thing if you just embrace it. I remember when I went no contact with my narcissist, I felt so much lighter and freer than I had ever felt in my life. 
If you can do that same thing, you will find that same joy, I promise. I want you to know that you can do better. I don't care if you're not perfect. I don't care if you're overweight or frumpy or too skinny or too whatever. You can do better. Nobody deserves the abuse of a narcissist. It's pure torture. And my friend, please remember, you can do better. Know that. And remind yourself when you feel weak. If you remove the narcissist from your world, you open up space for potentially healthy new relationships. And don't feel like you're forced to be in a relationship. There's no, nobody's telling you that you have to jump into a relationship. Quite honestly, I recommend waiting anywhere from a month to a year or more, depending on how long it takes you to heal, how long you were in the relationship with a narcissist, and how significantly the relationship tortured you as a person. The damage that you've experienced is, is profound and significant, but it doesn't mean it's, it's not repairable. Like they say, you're more beautiful in the broken places, right? You can do this. You can be the person you want to be. You can get through this recovery. I promise you. You have to know it. You have to know it. While anybody's initial reaction to change is going to be difficult sometimes, it's going to be hard, it's not always going to be easy to do any kind of major change in your life. And of course, this is especially true when it involves separation from someone you've spent any amount of time with. Because a lot of times, you literally sort of forget who you are. You become so enmeshed and codependent with a narcissist that you're not even sure who you would be without them. Remember this though, your situation doesn't make you any less than, it doesn't make you any less human. It makes you still a bundle of possibility, still someone who can completely overturn this whole thing and change his or her life and become something that you want to be. People who haven't experienced the hell of narcissistic abuse really truly have no idea how significantly terrible it can be, how horribly it can take over your world. Before you know it, when you're with these people, you find yourself literally putting every single thing you think, say, do, feel, or become through a narc filter. You always find yourself wondering, what is the narcissist going to think about this? Should I take that job? What if the narcissist doesn't want me to? This is true whether we're talking about a husband, a wife, a mother, a father, a brother, a sister. Narcissists are incredibly controlling of everyone in their life, anyone who they consider close people, close to them, supply, family, all these things. You have to remove the narc filter from yourself. You have to take it off, not just your brain, but your whole identity. Because now you're seeing yourself in a way if you haven't started to heal yet, you're starting to see, you, you see yourself in the same way that a narcissist would see you. And that voice is always in the back of your head, kind of niggling at you, kind of pushing at you. It's time for you to start shedding that version of yourself and start to create the version of yourself that you want to be. The person who you truly want and desire to be. The person that you consider to be the best possible version of yourself. My challenge to you today is to start deciding who you are now, who you want to become, and what it's all about. And to do that without the shadow of a narcissist vision, without the echo of a narcissist voice in your head, to do that with a clear, free, and open mind to possibility. Anything is possible if you want it to be true. I promise you that. I'm living proof of it. You can have, do, be, say, think what you want when you are free of a narcissist. If you choose to do so. So this brings me to the question of the day. And the question of the day is, do you choose to be, do, say, have what you want? Or do you choose to continue to allow a narcissist to torture you? What do you want from life? If the narcissist were not an issue in your life today, what would you be doing? I want you to think about it. All right. That's all I've got for you right now. As always, thank you so much for being a part of my day and a part of my life. And hey, thanks for letting me be a part of yours. It really does mean a lot to me. I'll see you soon. It's my mission to teach others what I know to be true. You really can create the life you want. Take care of your body. Take care of your soul. Nurture the real you and introduce him or her to the world. Be comfortable in your own skin and in your place in this world. Take your spot. Take it now. And the universe will take its cue from you. You feel me? If so, subscribe to my channel. Let's get it done together.